Hello, today we're going to talk about the Fresenius 5008S hemodialysis machine. This is the dialysis machine that you will be using at home for your hemodialysis. I'm going to look at the various components and parts of the dialysis machine and hopefully give you a brief explanation of what each component is and what it does. So there are three, three main parts to the Fresenius 5008S machine. There's this, the control monitor. This is where you control the machine and you look at what the machine is doing and it gives you all the readings for your blood pump speed, your venous pressure, your arterial pressure. Everything that's going on in the machine comes through this screen here. You have your on off button here. You have your mute button here. Your blood pump start and your blood pump stop. The blood section is where your blood gets taken out of, your, out of your fistula and pumped to the dialyzer where your dialysis takes place. The hydraulic section of the machine is the lower part here. On the lower part you have the brake, which allows you to brake the machine to stop it moving. To release the brake, just put your foot on that and the machine will move. You have this shelf here, which is where your A concentrate sits. You use the red probe from here to get your egg concentrate into the machine. Open the flap, put the probe in the can, close the flap. You open this flap and you put the bike by bag on there and then close the flap like that. You do not use the blue probe. That's not used on this machine. On this side of the machine, you can see the monitor tilts backwards and tilts forward. It has some movement like that, so you can view the, the monitor when you're dialyzing. You can also access the drip stand. Your bags of saline will go. To move the drip stand up and down, hold that bottom section there and push that ring upwards, and it allows you to push the, di the dialyzer drip stand up and down. To, to, to bring it back down, you do the same thing, hold the bottom, push that ring upwards, and it allows you to bring that back down. Down the side of the machine, this is the holder for the blood pressure cuff. You, this is what you use to get your blood pressure readings. Here we have the remote control. This is what, what you would use at home dialy on home dialysis. When the machine is not in use and you are not dialyzing, this remote control needs to sit in the holder because this is where it gets its charge. It's a bit like, the, like an electric toothbrush that you use at home. There's no wires connecting to it. You just put it in and it will charge at that point there. If you happen to leave it out, the charge will go through the day. And when you come to use it that evening, it won't connect to the dialysis machine and you won't be able to use it. On this side of the machine, you have the dialyzer holder, which moves like that, and that rotates through 360 degrees. You then have what we call the shunt interlock. This is where the dialysis lines sit when they're not in use or when the machine is disinfecting or rinsing. You have a red connector and a blue connector. Be aware that you have to follow the color code here. Put the blue one where the blue um, indicator is and the red one where the red one is. Make sure they're clipped on properly. The machine will not disinfect correctly if they're not clipped on. And also at the end of your dialysis, when you want to drain the dialyzer, the blue one needs to be on the blue connector. The red one still stays on the dialyzer. Within the blood lines, this is a sample port for taking dialysis samples. Within the Morrison unit, we don't use this for taking dialysis samples, but it is in the bloodline. So just be aware that it is for sampling um, the dialysis lines. And sometimes if you, if you should 
press that when you're dialyzing, you will get fluid coming out of that connector. On the back of the machine, sat at the top, you have a small area here where certain components, your bloodline components can sit if need be. You then have the handle for moving the machine around. This is where you push it and pull it. This connector here connects the dialysis machine to your reverse osmosis machine. So when the dialysis machine switches on, it'll switch the RO machine on at the same time. Here we have what's known as the equipotential bonding cable. It's an extra earth on the dialysis machine. The machine does have its own earth as you would in any electrical appliance. This is just an extra earth to make sure the machine is, is doubly safe. Going down the machine, this is the mains cable coming in to, into the back of the machine. This is the cooling fan. Air is sucked in here to cool the electronics within the machine. These are the diasafe filters. You will be shown how to change these. Um, they're changed when the machine tells you to change them. After so many treatments, the machine will ask you to change the diacy filters. To, to get access to them, you take the cover off like that, and you lift the, that flap there and lift that flap there. Between the two dialysis machines, we have the blood leak detector. That's within the machine. If you need to get access to it, you will turn that, open that flap there. However, you should not need to do this. If you do have a blood leak alarm, you will stop dialysis and come off and call for technical support. To the, this side of the machine, these points here, that point there allows you to open the arterial pressure measuring holder, dome holder, manually. If it doesn't open electrically, you can put a syringe on there and use a physical force to push the, the holder open. However, to do that, you need to put this white connector there, which is a non-return valve, onto that port there and put a large 50 mil syringe on there and push it in and you will see the clamp opening at the front. It might take more than one push on the syringe. You may have to disconnect the syringe from that white connector and give a second push on it. When not in use, that, that non-return valve needs to sit on that holder there to that side, right there. Further down the machine, we have the can of Citrosterol. This will get used every time you do a disinfect on the machine. It will suck up a certain amount of this fluid to disinfect the machine. It'll come up through this connector and into the machine there. The machine will also tell you when that needs changing and you will be trained on how to change that can. Next to the Citrosterol, you have the, the Sporatol. That Sporatol is does the weekly disinfect, it's a degreasing of the lines. We normally program the machines for that to happen on a Sunday. The machine will come on automatically and do its own disinfection with that Sporatol on a Sunday, and that gets pulled up into the machine through this hose there. To the bottom of the machine, you have the water connector from the RO. You have the drain connector. This is the drain of the, from the dialysis machine, taking the fluid back to the, dry, the drain point on your wall. The Equipotential bonding cable is connected at that point there. These two ports are not used. You may get a fluid in hydraulics alarm on the machine sometimes. That could indicate that there is a leak within the hydraulic section of the dialysis machine. And that is shown by this little pot on the back here, filling up with fluid. There's a leak sensor in there that will give the alarm. However, Often, you can, we have had problems in the past with bags of saline that have leaked at the top of the machine. The fluid runs down the back of the machine and fills up this sensor pot here. The way to clear that alarm 
is to get a syringe in here and draw the fluid out and then wipe it clean with a paper towel, close the flap and the machine should be able to reset to clear that alarm. It's very difficult, it's sometimes difficult to find this, this flap but if you look, locate it next to the drain under this point here, that little flap there will just lift up and you can clean the fluid out. Looking at the blood circuit, you have your blood lines which are connected to your fistula in your arm. This particular setup is for double pump single needle, which is what we use for nocturnal dialysis. The arterial line takes the blood from your fistula through this blood line all the way into the dialysis machine. It comes in at this side over here through the blood temperature module which we don't use but we route the line through there so it's connected a tidy route. In through the arterial line clamp which clamps the line in event of a problem with the machine it'll close the blood line to stop any blood coming from your body if there's an, an alarm on the machine. Arterial pressure is measured at this point here. From here the blood is taken through the arterial blood pump into the expansion chamber here. That pump will stop and then this pump will start and push the blood through this tube line here and out to your dialyzer. The blood passes through the dialyzer where dialysis takes place. You have on the dialyzer the arterial line, blood in and then the blood out through the venous line and you have the dialysis fluid lines, dialysis fluid in, dialysis fluid out. They're in opposite directions. It's called contraflow. From the top of the dialyzer, the blood comes back in to the machine, to the air detector. This has a level of blood within it. You can saline at the moment, but normally there would be blood in there when you're dialyzing. This detects if there is any air in that blood. If there is air in the blood, the machine will alarm and stop, and you will have to correct that air, get rid of it. On that chamber as well, you also measure the venous pressure. That's that port there. Ensure that that is screwed on nice and tightly when you line the machine. That tells you how good your axis is going back into your fistula. If you have a problem there, you will get a high venous pressure alarm. Or if the blood should start clotting, you will also get a high venous pressure alarm. Below the air detector, you have a primary detector. That tells you if there's blood or saline in the lines. And then just below that, you have the venous line clamp. If you should have air in there or any problems with the machine, the venous line clamp will close and stop the blood going back into the fistula. From there, the line, blood line comes back through the blood temperature module, the BTM, which needs to be connected in there just for tidiness. And from there, it'll come all the way back to, the, to your fistula. That's the blood circuit.